All right, hope everyone is doing well. Let me just check something real quick. All right. So, again, the question box is open, so, and I'll just leave it open for the remainder of the webinar. Today, very interesting day in terms of, you know, basically we had a small pullback trend day. However, it's one of those days where price just, you get a breakout and then you basically form a tight trading range where you get all these reversals and, you know, it always looks like it's going to reverse just the whole time, but they never do. And it's it's very important to be aware. You know, if you take every stop entry short, thinking, okay, you know, failed, you know, failed break out of this high. We have a measuring gap here. This, you know, this should close. We should close the gap. So I'm going to short here. If you do that enough, you're going to just get hammered today. I mean, you're going to lose. Tight trading ranges are the most dangerous thing for swing traders. You have to understand what's going on here. Bears are not shorting on stops. They're selling above bars. They're selling this full close, scalping out for a point. And look at that. Even if you sold this close at six at 67 even, price only went to 65.75. That means literally only went five ticks lower which means you had four ticks of profit and one tick to get out. So it's very, very difficult, you know. So, you know, just, just be aware of that, you know. It, it's similar to taking every stop entry buy through here, you know. Here you have a wedge bottom, so it makes sense, but it's best for a scalp. So, anyways, coming into today, weekly chart. Well, I'll start with this monthly. We'll start with the monthly chart. So, monthly chart looking phenomenal for the bulls on the monthly chart. But again, here's the breakout month. What will August look like? You know, so don't don't be fooled. You know, yes, we have you know basically a, a one week left of the trading day, of the one week left of the trading month. The bulls want this to close on its high. Realistically, I think we're going to get a tail. Um, you know, just because, you know, I think this is, it is a breakout, but it's also a trading range, and I, I do think the bulls will somehow be disappointed, and I, I think that. Now, I could easily be wrong. Um, again, I would, I'm not saying short up here, you know, I'm saying, you know, we have, about six consecutive bull bars, so the first versus final sale. Traders are using a very wide stop, probably down here. They're not going to let themselves be stopped out. And that's similar to a real quick weekly chart. You can see, I believe we closed above last week's high, 425. Yeah, so we closed three points above last week's high. Extremely, extremely important. Uh, it's subtle, but it is important. You know, it's followed through after this. It's it's four bull bars up. It's important. The first verse is going to fail. Daily chart. You know, pretty good rally. Stops, you know, still probably down here. However, realistically, I think bulls will get out soon. You know, they'll get out on a bear breakout, no question. They're not, no bulls going to let their stop get hit all the way down here. And if they do, then they're not. I don't think they'll be in the game playing. They won't be trading that long. That's just nobody uses this wide of a stop with the intention of getting it stopped out. They're only doing it, you know, for one, it's a catastrophic stop, and second, they're just following their rules. So, and another little tidbit that's pretty interesting right now. If you've been in house trading room, you've heard them talk about it. So, Channeling up, you kind of have a nested wedge, first push, second push, third, and then first push, second push, third. Well, it'll be interesting to see if this bar 
We're overbought on the monthly chart of uh, bonds. That's the 30 year bonds. So we're overbought, and you know, we have nested wedge tops, you know, possible final flag in this area, you know, possible final flag here, bad follow through. It'll be interesting to see what this month does. If we can close on its low, it's a reasonable short. And really, I mean, if you want to break it down, I kind of see it as, I don't know, what's, oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. Yeah, if you want to break it down, I don't know the whole, the full details, but just I'm going to keep it real simple. If if bonds go down in price, then we may, stock market may sell off. And there's a correlation between that. Hold on one second. Sorry. You know, again, I had to get some water real quick. Again, I'm not going to go into the full details of that. I'm sure, you know, most people understand the, you know, the correlation between if bond, you know, more interest rates and in bonds, the more people will, you know, they'll take on more risk. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't know a lot about that, uh, and I'm not going to tell you something that I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't want to mislead somebody. All All I'm saying is, if we get a strong close this month, and then we get a bear breakout, it could correlate to the stock market selling off. Again, that's all I want to go into. I, I'm not trying to, you know. I don't want to go far into the whole fundamentals as to why. I don't. It's interesting to know, but I don't trade that way. And to me, whether it's bonds, whether it's stocks, whether it's options, it's a chart. I keep it as simple as that. And I think if you ask Al, he'd tell you the same thing. So anyway, it's just kind of it's it's important to be aware of that though. But uh, so anyway, 60 minute chart. Very tight trading range, you know. We broke out here and then sold it off. Today we tried to get to a new all-time high. We could not. Let's go to the five-minute chart. So you know, we know a few things coming into today. If you've been following out long enough, you've heard him say many times that when you get a strong, when you get a sell-off, you know, a trend from the open, it, you know, a bear trend, a, a strong bear trend. Very often the next day, you know, 25% chance you get another bear trend day, you know, 50% chance you get, you know, bear follow through on the open, but 75% chance you at least get a two hour sideways to up trading range. Well, obviously we got a lot more than that. And, you know, it, it, if you think about it, Looking back at the daily chart, you know, we sold off, you know, micro double top, up, down, up, down. This was, an, you know, a signal bar roughly, you know, technically this was, but, you know, we had a sell off and bulls immediately bought it. And, well, I think that's important. You know, it shows that it's important, you know, it's important to wait for a bear breakout. And if you're, you know, you paid attention to how, even before yesterday closed, he was saying that even if we sell off the whole day, it'll probably just be a you know full flag, which it was in this case. Now I still think we're going to pull back deeper, you know, just because this day was bought, just because the sell off was bought doesn't really mean a good deal. I mean, does that mean we're just going to rock? I think is it good for the bulls? Yes. Does it mean it's going to rock it up? Probably not. Another thing you heard Al mention was, if you're in his room, he talked about buying puts up here, and you know, he said he didn't just because, well, 
and he debated it and he didn't want to get distracted so he didn't do it but one thing he talked about was you know he likes to buy puts on a rally and he didn't want to buy them down here because of the risk of this and he talked about you know if you think about it a lot of Well, a lot of times you have rallies on a Friday to entice traders to enable a put position, or in this case, to buy puts, betting on you know more down. But they have to hold it over the weekend, which you know causes decay, time decay. But I, I don't want to get too far on that. So, anyways, let's just go into the day. So, bar one, you had a. Always in short, we're right at a 50% pullback for the bears, as you can see. So, 50 50 chance, you know, probably minor reversal, and you know, we're probably not going to form a higher low, but here we'll probably have to test down. So, if you're selling, probably better to sell the close, but it's tricky because we can easily just get more up, which is what we did overall. So it's not really a great stop entry short below. You know, if I had to do anything, I, I would sell. I would not buy. Just because I think we may test down. Bar two reassured that, but then you get bar three. Kind of a warning that strong as the bears are, the bulls are trying to form the higher low, and that you know we may get that. So, anyways, so opening reversal, but again, probably sellers above. You know, do bulls get out? Maybe they do. You know, really the important bar was here, this bear bar at nine o'clock. And again, if you well, think about what happened. So you had a lot of bears wait. You know, they either sold this stop entry or sold bar two. As soon as it went below bar two, it immediately found buyers, and that's a warning that a lot of traders. Whether or not they sold down here, scaled in, they got out down here. And there's a lot of buying down here. So they either sold here, sold more up here, and got out, or they just simply sold more up here, scuffed out. But price is not going down. Now, is it, you know, if you're trading always in, do you short below and then get out above here? I wouldn't. I think it's. Kind of tricky, you know, because that's always the question of, you know, do you get out? Is this a fail though too short? Do you get out on a stop above this bar? I would have if it was a bull bar closing on time. Let's understand that. I don't know, you know, I think it kind of is, it's one of those situations where not a great buy above, so you just hold, put your stop above here. Either one, you know, flip a coin, it would probably. If you did both, I don't think really one's any better than the other. You know, personally, I'd probably keep the stop above bar one just because yeah, you know, it just went in doubt. It, it's kind of the alcohols of the Walmart trade. You sell below for your stop above, and you just go on a walk and come back in an hour. But it's not a great stop entry to begin with. Here, reasonable stop entry at 910. However, you know, it's a second entry short, double top, 50 50 chance to test down in the open. However, it's a big bar for risk. You know, the risk is fairly big compared to the range. And that's kind of a warning that this may not be a great short, but it's an okay short. Short below, stop one tick above. However, I'm going to do this. 920 is a very, it's a problem. You know, for one, let's see here. So your entry was 58.75. You need 57.50. Oh, yeah, see. Yeah, so I mean, clearly the bears are failing to get their scalp and we're bouncing at the moving average. So, if you're always in short, any through here, sold here, sold over here, sold this close, I'd get out probably above this bar, especially on this close. I'd, you know, 
I think it's it's becoming always along here. Here, this you give it a, this is kind of one of those. You, it's a low probability short. You know, the risk is small, but at the same time, I think it's more of a warning for the bulls than it is a short for the bears. When I say that, it's a warning that we're getting bad ball. You know, we're not getting this. We're getting full bar, bad follow through, full breakout, bad follow through, full breakout, full breakout, we follow through. However, but be aware, this is a tight channel. So, you know, I don't think the Bears have made a scalp, a stop entry, a scalp on a stop entry short yet. Yeah, okay, so they made a one point scalp here. But that's really it. So, from at 8.55 low. So, it's a tight channel. It's always in long, but. This looks like it's going to develop into a trading range, and we easily we can easily test down to these highs. So now you probably need to stop down here at a minimum. Stop here. You know, I would not have a stop. I would have a stop right here. So here, you know, three pushes up. One, two, three. You know, maybe one, two, three. So maybe a wedge here. But again. Very tight channel, probably at least second leg up. So and it's not a very strong short. It's it's probably one of those. It, I think it's more of traders taking profits, knowing you're going to pull back to the moving average and waiting to buy lower than it is bear shorting. So if you're taking the short, you have to understand that. And this, as soon as price hesitates, you're going to have buyers. And you can see if you took the short, you can make with scalp. But if you did, got to get out of the 1025. No question on that. Sorry, just one moment. Alright, sorry about that. So, all right, but yeah, back to what I was saying. So again, I think it's a minor reversal, probably second leg up. It's important to see what happens at this close. So it looks like we're trying to form a wedge, and you know, three pushes, one, two, three. But instead of a signal bar, look what happened. We just broke to the upside. So this is kind of one of those really brief. First off, it's a surprise bar, so we need to expect it. You know, it's important to expect a second leg up. However, by the way, this is the open of the week. If you're all wondering, the week obviously we came close to it yesterday and on the open, and we just kind of bounced off it. But anyways, strong enough for a second leg up. However, you've got to think it may be kind of like one of these bars. So we've got a bear breakout and two more pushes down, so three pushes in total. You know, when you get a breakout, usually the minimum is the second leg up. If it's a strong, if it's a really strong breakout bar, sometimes you'll get three pushes. So kind of like, you know, bear breakout, second leg down, but this is so strong that you get a second leg. You get three legs in total, one, two, and three. So, you know, something to think about here. You know, but look at the follow through. You know, Al, Al said, I believe he's, or, you know, if the, bull, if the Bulls can get a very strong follow-through bar here, we may get a really strong turn day, but we didn't get it. Here, we got follow-through, which is the minimum, but it's not a great follow-through bar. And, you know, again, probably more up. You know, I think it's okay for a bull to get out here. We're not sure, but if they do, got to get along again and really through here. Really a tricky price action. I think you either you do two things. If you're comfortable scalping, selling above bars, buying below bars, you do that. That's fine. 
difficult to do. And I think traders that are just starting out, if they can't trade small, they should not do that. I think it's it's very difficult. So the other two options is, you know, I'd get out of the long and just wait. Or just hold long. I would not take the stop entry short. So you will you'll get eaten up if you do that. You know? It's kinda like when you're in a trading range on the open, pick a short, pick a stop entry that looks great that you think makes the most sense. Sell below, put your stop where it needs to be, and just wait. Worst case you lose, and just accept that you're gonna you may you'll probably lose, but if you're right, you may make a lot. So you know, maybe you short below this bar, stop up here, and if you're right, you'll make a lot. But if you, you know, maybe you get out here. But the worst thing you can do is go back and forth. So, anyways, you know, tight trading range, tried to rally up, but the breakout wasn't strong. Broke above yesterday's high, but couldn't get to new all-time high, which is this blue line right here. ATH all-time high. So, sorry about that. One moment. All right, so I'm back. Again, I apologize for that. So, yeah, we went you know, sideways for so long that traders agreed any breakout we get will probably come back into the range. So, anyways, on a day like today, you know, you have to understand that it's, it's not very, it's climactic, but it's not, you know, you're not getting a sell off, another 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 sell off. It just kind of drifts, you know. This erases the climactic behavior and it allows it to just kind of drift and close up on the tie. So it's dangerous. Like for instance, yesterday, you could easily, you know, start buying, buying lows, buying lows, buying more lower, more lower, more lower, and getting out. Well, can't really do that on day like that. So it's important to notice the buying pressure and the lack of strong selling pressure, I should say. All right, but that, I mean, that's, um, I don't really have a lot for, in terms of the day. I really, you know, really, always in short in here, probably started to become always in long here. Rallied up, never really became always in short. I'd get out below here, below this part 1450 if I was holding. You know, maybe you get out here, but if you do, you got to get back in. Same for any of this. So, yeah, that's really all I have for today. And I'll, I'll wait for, I'll give questions a few minutes and then I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar.
All right, looks like that's it for questions. So, hope everyone has a great weekend.